Okay, so we've got linearization down, but you can't necessarily trust the linearization to accurately represent the dynamics. Recall the Hartman-Grobman theorem that we used back in volume two to validate a linearization. Recall the key definition back in volume two was an equilibrium being hyperbolic. An equilibrium is hyperbolic if none of the eigenvalues of its linearization is neutral. That means there's some combination of stable and unstable eigenvalues. If you want to think of it in a cartoon picture here in higher dimensions, you have some collection of stable eigenvalues that span some sort of eigenspace, and you have some collection of unstable eigenvalues that again span some sort of unstable eigenspace. A hyperbolic equilibrium sort of feels like a higher dimensional saddle point. Now it may be totally stable, maybe totally unstable, whatever, but if you want a quick cartoon for hyperbolicity, this is it. And that's really all we need. The Hartmann-Grobman theorem goes through just the same as in volume two. Here's the statement. At a hyperbolic equilibrium, the linearized dynamics is topologically conjugate to the nonlinear dynamics on some neighborhood. So what are the key points? You need a hyperbolic equilibrium, so no neutral eigenvalues. But once you've got that, you have a local result. It's only holding locally, but it does tell you that qualitatively the dynamics are the same. They match up. That's what we mean by topologically conjugate. And if you need to see a more precise definition, go back to volume two. That's it. That's the Hartmann-Grobman theorem. Works just the same. Now there is a little bit more to the story if we compare the linear versus the nonlinear versions of the dynamics about an equilibrium. In the linearized case, we have this cartoon picture in our head of all of the unstable eigenvalues and their eigenvectors forming an unstable eigenspace of some dimension, who knows what it is. Likewise, with the stable eigenvalues and the stable eigenvectors forming a stable eigenspace. In the linearized dynamics, of course, these are invariant subspaces. They're flat, and once you start in there, you stay in there. But what about in the nonlinear setting? Hartman Grobman says that they're, they're the same, they're topologically conjugate, but what does it look like geometrically? These unstable directions are going to form something that locally looks just like that unstable eigenspace. The stable stuff is going to look locally just like that stable eigenspace, but as you, as you move out away from that equilibrium, it starts to get more wobbly and nonlinear. Now, what are these things? Are they curves? Are they surfaces? Are they higher dimensional analogs of that? Yes, they are called manifolds, stable manifolds, unstable manifolds. These are very cool objects, but they're not for us, at least not yet a foreshadowing of things to come. There's something called the stable manifold theorem. That is such a deep result. That tells you a lot about these things that are generalizations of stable and unstable eigenspaces. That is a topic for the future.